Welcome everyone to Winston-Salem, North Carolina, just a short drive from downtown Truist Field, home of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, who tonight open their season with an ACC conference game against the preseason number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge, joined shortly by Todd McShay and Allison Williams. Delighted to have you with us and thrilled to be here. And Todd, as we visited with these two teams in the lead up to this game, the words we heard over and over again, grateful, thankful, mm -hmm. appreciative. I think that really sums up how the players and coaches feel. Absolutely. Just great appreciation because of all the hard work, commitment, sacrifice that had to be put out by players, coaches, medical staff, administrators, just to get us here to the starting line of what they all want to do, and that's play a college football game. And tonight we start with the number one team in the country, the Clemson Tigers. They've been in the college football playoff each of the last five years. And Dabo Sweeney says he thinks this is the most talented roster he's had. That's a scary thought. They are led by what the coach calls generational talents in the quarterback Trevor Lawrence and the running back Travis Etienne. Both of whom, while many around the country opted out, particularly star players, they decide to stick around, try to win another championship. With more on that down on the field, here's Todd McShay. Yeah, Sean, Trevor Lawrence has the highest grade of a quarterback that I've had going back to 2012 with Andrew Luck. 20 years of evaluating players, he has the second highest grade coming into this season. And then you talk about uh, Trevor Et uh, Travis Etienne at the running back spot. He's the number one running back in the class and number 19 overall. So obviously these two are freakishly talented. They know that's the strength of this team. And if you go back and study the history of the draft, Sean, this would be just the fourth group in terms of tandems, running back and quarterback, to ever be the first players at their position to come off the board. It's a really special and talented group. I can't wait to see them in their first game tonight. Way to fight through that mask. Kind of my dream come true. Tom McShay muzzled. When we come back, we'll be joined by Allison Williams and preview the Wake Forest Demon Deacons in their home stadium. They won at least seven games in each of the last four years. That's the longest such streak in program history. They've been the bowl games each of the last four years, also the longest streak in Wake Forest football history. Of course, one of the questions in this COVID era, who's playing, who is not playing? Let's sort some of that out down on the field. Here's Allison Williams. Hey there, Sean. Yeah, I was speaking with head coach for Wake Forest, Dave Blossom, before the game, and he was very much aware of and hoping to take advantage of some key players on Clemson's defense that did not make the trip. Three guys on that two deep were not able to come, including their starting defensive end, Justin Foster, and two of their top four corners, which is huge because Clawson said his receivers have to find a way to win some of those battles on the outside. And keep in mind, James Skalski, their starting middle linebacker, can't play the first half because of a targeting call in the national champ championship game. Dabo Sweeney said this may be his best back seven, but he'll be missing some of that speed, talent, and athleticism he was raving to us about. Sean? All right, Allison, thank you. The Tigers have taken the field, and this has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff from Winston-Salem is next. You're watching Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. And this is the ACC on ESPN. We'll play 10 conference games in the ACC this year for the first time. Each school allowed to play one non-conference game. It's rare that these ACC teams begin with a league game, but they do tonight. Trevor Lawrence and the Clemson Tigers will get the ball first as Wake Forest won the toss and deferred. Jack Crane will kick off in this empty stadium. There are some cardboard cutouts and there are 50 Wake Forest parents. North Carolina, the state of North Carolina allows gatherings of 50. So Dave Clawson extended the invitation starting with the 50 year seniors to the parents went down the list. Jack Crane is a transfer from Washington State. Coach Clawson told us their kickoff coverage was terrible last year. He has a strong leg crane, so they're hoping it'll be much better this year, and that's a good start in that direction, as it's not returnable for Joseph and Gata. So here comes Trevor Lawrence, very likely to be the number one pick in the next NFL draft, and ultra successful to Clemson, the only loss in his last game, the national championship game against LSU. But I think, Todd, we've seen 
in this offseason that he has emerged as a real leader among all players around yeah. college football, has really taken his place at the forefront of the racial and social justice issues. He has embraced that. He's been a great representative of college football. He was also very vocal in that the players wanted to play. Their first play from scrimmage is a handoff to Travis Etienne. And he's played ahead for about four. Lawrence Jr. from Cartersville, Georgia, outside Atlanta. Great size and strength, 6'6", 220. His intended receiver, Amari Rogers, fell down. You know, Sean, we saw Trevor Lawrence in his first start, and he took over for Kelly Bryan, and he was very reluctant to kind of take over the leadership role of the team. He grew into it, and just watching him grow and mature as a leader, not just on his team, but across the country has been pretty special to see. Third down and six. He has plenty of time. It's a strong defensive line for Wake Forest, and they get to him. All the way back near the 10-yard line, it's Boogie Basham. Dabo Sweeney said he's the best defensive end we're going to play all year, and he made his presence known already. Well, it was good coverage. It was only a three-man rush, and Trevor Lawrence left the pocket, and Basham was able to size him up and get him to the ground, but there was excellent coverage downfield, and Trevor Lawrence had nowhere to go with the football. Interesting decision by Dave Clawson to defer. They believe the defense is their strength with nine returning starters, and that decision paid off. Nice punt by the veteran Will Spires, four-year starting punter. And Taylor Marin returns it across the 40, and it'll be excellent starting field position for Wake Forest, led by Sam Hartman, terrific high school quarterback, both at Davidson Day in North Carolina and also in South Carolina. Won the job as a true freshman two years ago, but then broke his leg, backed up Jamie Newman last year, took advantage of that year to gain 40 pounds. He's gone from 175 as a freshman to 215 tonight. And he's back as the starter, handing it off for a minimal gain to Christian Beal Smith, who was tackled by K.J. Henry. Well, with these corners not in the game that Allison referenced, it's very important for Wake Forest to win some one-on-one -on -one battles down the field. And they were looking downfield, and Hartman ran out of time, and he got swung down by K.J. Henry back in his hometown of Winston-Salem. He's a sophomore from this city, and he has a big sack, and Wake Forest is going to go fast. Here they are on third down and 18. More time this time for Hartman. He has a receiver. He has a first down, but there is a flag back at the 41 on the other side of the 50. Donovan Green, who should be their leading wide receiver this year, made the catch and took it down to the 37. Defense number 11. That penalty is declined. The results of the play, first down. Those Riley are the Johnson, the referee. Those are the kind of plays they need Donovan Green to make. He was working on Andrew Booth, a, a new starter at corner. Again, this is a secondary Clemson that lost three out of their four starters, and the one returning starter, Darion Kendrick, not here tonight. So good start for Donovan Green. Play action pass. Hartman going deep, single coverage, lots of contact, and no flags. It was intended for Jaquari Roberson. Working on Landon Zanders, who they think is going to be a star in this secondary. A lot of contact. Looked like they could have thrown a flag there. Looked like there was some grabbing before the ball got there. We have our rules expert, longtime on the field official Bill Lamagne with us tonight from his home in the uh, Chicago suburbs. There's Christian Beal Smith again, and we can see a monitor with Bill's sure. handsome face, and he was gesturing, throw the flag. So he thought. Clemson caught a break there. There's Bill. Should have been pass interference, yeah, I, Bill. Good evening, guys. Good evening. I have a restriction. Restriction here. Gained an advantage. There should have been a flag. And it is very costly as now they go out of field goal range as Sam Hartman is sacked by Brian Brzee. 
depending on what recruiting service you rely on, he might have been the top recruit in the country. Every service had him in the top ten. What a what a powerful man. I mean, he he's a guy who showed up on campus. Dabo Swinney said he looked like he's been playing college football for three years. That time was just a one arm strong rush. Ran right through his offensive lineman in front of him, right to the quarterback. Ivan Moore as the punter. His first game as a punter. They had a four year starter in Dom Maggio. Went to camp with the Ravens and got cut. Moore trying for the corner and a fair catch made by Amari Rogers inside the 10. Media timeout. Timeout. We played three and a half minutes here in Winston Salem. For the first time since 2004, Clemson and Wake Forest opening their college football seasons against one another. Each team has had it once, and now Clemson from its own eight. A play fake to Travis Etienne, and a deep throw by Trevor Lawrence. He hits Amari Rogers in stride out across the 40 to near midfield. Excellent job waiting for that play to develop. Amari was in the slot, good protection off the play action, and then he leads him perfectly with enough loft on the ball and a nice first down. Rodgers, the leader now of this receiving group. They throw it out wide to him again. He missed, made a tackle miss, delivered a stiff arm, and went out of bounds at the 39. The Chick-fil-A impact players. Here's Todd. Yeah, Sean, keep an eye on 88, the tight end, Braden Galloway. I think he's the best tight end that Clemson has had, going back to Dwayne Allen and, and Jordan Leggett. He's that kind of an impact player. On the flip side, number nine, defensive end, Boogie Basham. We already saw a sack earlier in the game. He is the, one of the best defense of players in the country. Well, we just saw him right there make a play on the backside of a run play. Everybody knows about Boogie as a pass rusher, but when we talked to Lyle Hemphill, the defensive coordinator says he's a better player on first and second down than people realize. Plays hard against the run, very physical against the run. That time a nice play from the backside. 19 straight games with a tackle for a loss. Longest streak among any active player by seven games. Short pass, and there's Galloway. Todd was just talking about him. Missed most of last year, but emerged in the college football playoff, and then two big catches were 60 yards in their loss to LSU in the title game. Third down, less than a yard. Five minutes gone by, no score. Clemson a big favorite, as you might expect. They've won the last 11 meetings head-to-head -head against Wake Forest, the last two by a combined 115 to 6. ETN off left tackle. And he has a first down. Frustrated he didn't have more as he was chopped down by Luke Masterson, a safety at the 26 yard line. And for this Wake Forest defense, the last two years against Clemson's offense has been a real struggle. Last year was Trevor Lawrence throwing to T. Higgins, four touchdown passes on the day. The year before that, Clemson ran for over 400 yards. ETN showing his power and speed as he turned the corner and nearly took it to the end zone. They'll mark him out at the 13. It's another first down for the Tigers. Watch the block by the left tackle, Jackson Carmen. Just throws the man out of the way, opens up a nice gap there, and the speed of ETN, all he needs is a little crease, and he got more than a crease that time thanks to their best offensive lineman, Jackson Carmen. First and 10 from the 13. They flip it to Amari Rogers, and he's wrestled down after a gain of a couple by D.J. Taylor. The Deeks happy to have him back. He was a starter a couple of years ago. Missed all of last season due to injury. We haven't seen the running ability of Trevor Lawrence yet. That, that, towards the end of the year, that's where he became even more effective, his willingness to use his legs. Here in the red zone, this part of the field, wouldn't be surprised to see him keep the football. They seem to be setting it up with that action. And it's Etienne again, bouncing off a tackler. That time it was Zion Keith who didn't wrap up. But he did get the first down to Etienne inside the three. First and goal. Clemson. They marked it just inside the two. Clemson playing with a lot of pace here. And uh, there you go. Setting up the run for Lawrence. 
faked it that time to ETN, and Lawrence scores the first touchdown of the season for the Clemson Tigers, a two-yard run. When you have a back as good as ETN, you have to respect it. Everybody goes for number nine, and there's a clear opening for Trevor Lawrence on the outside. The whole defense collapsed down. He had nine rushing touchdowns last season. E.T. Potter adds the extra point. He's now made all the 87 PATs in his career. Nifty drive. They went 92 yards in nine plays. Took under three and a half minutes to do it. Well, for the first time in the history of game day, Wake Forest was the host this morning. And a great job by the crew to take down the set in the middle of the field in less than three hours. Cheerleaders were there this morning. 90th different city to host game day, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They did a great job. It's unfortunate the student body couldn't be here. The usual atmosphere around game day. But a nice atmosphere nonetheless. Great information dispensed. The kickoff is a touchback by B.T. Potter. We send you back to Kevin Nagandi. And Allison, thank you, Kevin. Wake Forest from its own 25, and they start on the ground with Christian Beale Smith. And a good gainer on first down as he made it across the 30 for a pickup of six. And Todd, this is a big no call early in the game, and this is clearly should have been pass interference. And yeah. Yeah, hands all over the jersey there, there's no question. Bouncing off the pile and picking up the first down is Christian Beal Smith. And when you're an underdog, you need to get those calls. Yep, absolutely you do. A couple good runs back to back for Wake Forest. They want to run the football. They've had a difficult time running it against Clemson for the last couple years. They, like Clemson, have a revamped offensive line. Deep throw by Sam Hartman. Good coverage by Nolan Turner on Donovan Green. Nolan Turner, a first-time starter. He's played a lot of football. He's been in the program. Very smart guy. Knows the defense extremely well, but this is the first time he's been a regular, a starter. Had off-season shoulder surgery and playing with a lot of confidence right now. They look to the sideline now. Warren Ruggiero is the offensive coordinator. Here's the matchup they want right here. Donovan Green working on Andrew Booth. And they decided on a run. Didn't look very promising, but it turned into about a four-yard gain for Christian Beal Smith. Miles Murphy, a true freshman from Marietta, Georgia, made the tackle. He was the number three overall player in the nation in high school last year, according to ESPN. And another guy Coach Sweeney thinks is going to be a superstar. Kind of scary when Dabo said, <laughs> I think this is the most talented roster we've ever had, yeah. given the success that they've had. Quick hitter, Taylor Marin, out to the 46-yard line, about three yards shy of the first down. Part of the reason why Dabo thinks this is the most talented roster he's had is these freshmen. I mean, it's unbelievable to think that Brian Brzee, number 11, comes in, has a sack already early on. Miles Murphy, an impact player, number 98. These guys are true freshmen. And as, as Todd alluded to earlier, Dabo said, you know, usually these, we have guys that look like this when they leave, not when they show up. These guys are ready to play right away, and we're seeing it so far tonight. Yeah. About two yards short of the first down, Dave Clawson sends on the punter, Ivan Mora. Mari Rogers back deep. Very little breeze in the stadium tonight. Very comfortable night here in Winston-Salem. Rogers let it go. A good decision. It'll be a touchback. 5.52 to go, first quarter. The opener for Clemson and Wake Forest in the Tigers' lead, 7-0.
Here's a look at tonight's Nissan Heisman Trophy watch. Both Lawrence and ETN, certainly Heisman Trophy candidates, and each off to a good start. Pick your poison. You know, I mean, you want to try to stop ETN? Well, then you got to deal with the passing of Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence faked ETN wide open down the middle of the field. Braden Galloway and the tight ends out to the 45 yard line, a pickup of 20 on first down for Clemson. Well, watch the linebackers go with the fake. I mean, everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Galloway goes right into an open void. Easy throw. Clemson going just as quickly as Wake Forest does on offense. Cornell Powell made the catch, fifth year senior. They think he'll be more involved in the passing game this year with the departure of T. Higgins to the NFL. The spinal injury to Justin Ross. That has him out for the season. Real encouraging in that last scoring drive, Sean, is the way the chemistry between Lawrence and Amari Rogers looks. Here's ETN, big hole, burst of speed, fights through tackles, and has a first down to the week 33. See, that's the difference between Travis ETN now and Travis ETN when he was younger in his career. He was not a real physical runner, so much added lower body strength. His ability to break tackles and get yards after contact now has made him truly special. That was a 16-yard run. Looking like he was going to pass. He delayed handoff to ETN and Royce Francis dumped him. Francis part of a deep defensive line. Dave Clawson says it's the deepest group that they've had in his seven years as head coach. He used the word playable. He said we have ten yeah. playable defensive linemen, including the redshirt sophomore Francis. That's excellent depth, depth to have that many guys up front, and you need them at that position more than anywhere. I think they can win battles up front against this new Clemson offensive line off his back foot. Man wide open, and Rodgers dropped it. He was so concerned, I think, with making sure he stayed in bounds along the back line to the end zone that he didn't catch it, but there wasn't a Demon Deacon anywhere near him. No, there was a blown coverage. I mean, the safety Masterson left his deep area. Nobody there, and Rodgers probably not aware how close he was to the line. You see his eyes. He tried to look down to see where his feet needed to be and just enough to take his eyes off the football. Darian Wrencher now in it running back. And a timeout called by Wake Forest. Very fortunate they're not down 14 to nothing after that busted coverage by Dave Clawson's defense. Timeout, and that is their first charge to this half. I think one of the most underappreciated coaches in the country right there, Todd. Dave Clawson. Yeah. Not only has he won everywhere he's been, and he's won big at, at Fordham, at Richmond, at Bowling Green, now here at Wake Forest. We mentioned the historic success coming on the air, four straight bowl games. And usually when he's taken over programs, they've been quite yeah. a bit down. Uh, a terrific coach and a wonderful person, too. Yeah, you know, he's he's a guy who could do one of those, I don't know, Dove commercials, you know? I mean, he, he's comfortable in his own skin. Mm -hmm. Knows who he is, knows what his program's about, knows how he wants to build it, and he has a lot of confidence, and he's been successful in all of it. Shot. Sean and Todd, uh, you know, Dave Clawson has had so much success at Wake Forest, and he kind of wanted to talk to his captains about that before the game. He had them huddled up, five of them, and he said, look, we've won a lot of games. We've had big comeback victories. The one team we haven't shown that resilience against is Clemson, and that's got to change tonight. Our game should not change based on our opponent. That's the next breakthrough win for them. Never beaten a number one ranked team. 0 and 8 all time against number one. All kinds of running room on the delay for ETN. And he's inside the five yard line. It'll be first and goal. Clemson again, the power and the speed. Third and long. Lyle Hemphill told us we have to do a better job against the deceptive plays. The screen and draw game Clemson has is outstanding. Show the action one way, it shows pass. ETN breaks it back out the other way. That's a draw play on third and long. And now it's first down inside the five. And again, Dave Clawson running on the field to call a timeout. His defense obviously on timeout. its heels. 30 second timeout. Wake Forest. 
But Lyle Hempel said the way they run screens and draws is a work of art. Yeah. They're excellent, and whether it's draws to ETN or draws of the quarterback, but Travis ETN, when he played as a freshman against Alabama, just didn't have the physical strength to run through tackles. Got in the weight room, real committed to improving himself, and now when you watch him run, he just looks like a completely different runner, and it's lower body strength and leg drive that has made the difference for him. He's still not a huge back, but he's a much more powerful back than he was earlier in his career. Yeah, Todd, he's, he's so under control, too. I love watching him and now with the experience that he has. He waits for his blocks. He's patient. And then when he has to turn in that next gear, he's able to do it. And as you mentioned, the contact balance is what I call it. Being able to, on contact, create extra yards, he, he does it as well as anyone in the country now. And that was not the case a couple of years ago. Yeah. Averaging just under 10 yards per carry for his career entering tonight 7.8 yards per carry trying to get four and a touchdown he got driven back by Luke Masterson solid safety in his fifth year out of Naples Florida second and goal three minutes and ten seconds to go in the quarter ETN up and over tried to extend the ball didn't quite get it there Ryan Smenda the inside linebacker Made the tackle. You know, you give him some grace because he's a great player. That's a dangerous play, though. I mean, he's pretty far away from the goal line, reaching that ball out with one hand. All it has to do is break the plane, but that still is a pretty risky play by Travis Etienne. Good look from the progressive pylon cam. Lawrence with Etienne on his left hip. He same keeps thing. it, same play, <laughs> yep. different direction, touchdown, Trevor Lawrence, his second rushing touchdown of the night. And both times, watch Braden Galloway, the tight end that we've talked about earlier in the show. He's just going to kind of get a little bit of a block on the end, just enough to give Trevor Lawrence that cushion. But hey, you got to respect the give to ETN. He's run the ball down the field. And that's an easy, another easy touchdown As a quarterback, run. Todd, you, you kind of feel like you cheated your running back there. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. B.T. Potter adds the extra point. Two and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter. Clemson up 14 to nothing. Kick off your week one NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow with the countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. Joe Montana, Brett Favre, and Peyton Manning reflect on changing teams late in their careers with Tom Brady about to do the same thing in Tampa. And then tomorrow at 4 Eastern time, 1 Pacific on ESPN, the U.S. Open Men's Championship, the final match. Alexander Zverev and Dominic Team each looking for his first Grand Slam title. Coverage begins with a preview show presented by Mercedes Band at 3.30 Eastern. Team would be the first Austrian to win a major tennis title. First time since 2014. The championship match will not include a player named Djokovic, Nadal, or Federer. Here's BT Potter to kick off. Donovan Green has no chance as that sails over his head. So more of the same Todd Blackledge yeah. from Clemson. Five straight appearances in the college football playoff. Five straight uh, outright ACC titles. And looking very much like they deserve the preseason number one ranking here. Yeah, and the thing that you see, uh, it's obvious in the first quarter of this game, you talk about recruiting and how well Dabo and his staff have recruited the last several years. It, it shows up here. You got one returning starter on your offensive line. You only have a couple starters returning on defense, and a couple of those guys aren't here. You just plug new guys in. The talent that they've recruited is evident in a game like this. Sam Hartman had to pull it down, got back to the line of scrimmage. Give him forward progress just across the line before he was taken down by Mike Jones. I think Sam Hartman in this Wake Forest offense, they have to find some way to make some first downs and hold on to the football a little bit. It's not a hot night. I don't think the defense is getting worn out, but they had to use two timeouts in that last possession just to get lined up correctly. They need to regroup. 
It's a very pleasant night. 72 degrees. Cool for this time of the year here in North Carolina. Hartman couldn't find anywhere to throw it and nowhere to run. That's been a problem. We mentioned the last two years. They've been dominated. Yes. The game at Clemson last year, late in the year, Wake Forest had a lot of injuries that derailed the 7-1 and one start. But in the last two meetings, Clemson has scored 16 touchdowns, and Wake Forest has 16 first downs. Yeah. And no touchdowns. And no <laughs> touchdowns. And being outscored 115-6. to six. Hartman steps into a long throw. Underthrown ball and a beautiful move back to the ball by Donovan Green and a huge play and much needed for Wake Forest. And Dave Clausen. It's a 39 yard gain. That's a 50 50 ball that Donovan Green just went up and came down with. One of the most highly recruited players they've had here under Dave Clausen. Running out of bounds, Christian Beal Smith taken there by Joseph Charleston, Todd McShay. Yeah, Wake Forest lost five of their six top pass catchers from a year ago, so they, they're really relying on Green. He he only had 13 catches last year, played in four games. He was able to redshirt, but he's the highest recruited player that they've had in Dave Clawson's tenure. They throw it out wide. The ball's free. Was it a catch and a fumble or an incomplete pass? It looks like they're calling it a catch and a recovery by Clemson. A.T. Perry, the receiver, Regan Upshaw knocked it out. I didn't think he had the ball long enough. Let's take a look at the replay here. The play on the field is a catch. First down. I think they'll take a look at that. Great hustle play by Upshaw, though, coming from his defensive end position, listed as number three on the depth chart at defensive end. The previous play is under further review. And as they take a look at it, let's bring in Bill Lemagne from his uh, very good looking room there, Bill. It looks like a home office, a lot of your memorabilia. What do you think about this play, Bill? Yeah, it is. It, uh, he, he didn't have it long enough. He didn't. He, he started to control it, never made a football move, lost the ball, incomplete pass. And it is a nice room. I know you're on a little bit of a delay, Bill. One of the things we have to work with in this COVID era. He's a very accomplished man. He should have a lot of trophies <laughs> and flags. I wonder if he's wearing a, a full suit or like shorts underneath that. I just hope he knows that even though he's home, a cocktail hour waits till the end of the game. <laughs> That's right. I wonder if he's framed some whistles now that they have to use Electric whistles, you know, that might be a thing of the past. The the old whistle on a lanyard. Yeah, they're trying not to blow the old traditional whistle. So There's not to Interview. spray. It's an incomplete pass. The ball will be brought back to the previous spot. Third down at the 32-yard line, and the clock will start on the snap. Well, I think they got the call right, as Bill did as well. I mean, and that's a good break for Wake Forest. Still an excellent hustle play by some backups on this Clemson defense. But now a, a manageable situation for Sam Hartman on third down. They've got to get, they got to keep this ball and, and keep possession here. They've got a great field goal kicker, but they're not quite in his range yet, I don't believe. Nick Skiba's long last year was 45. He is an All-American field goal kicker. Third down and seven. And now the umpire stopping the play and moving it to the right hash mark. Michael Wooten is the umpire. Looks like Sheridan Jones is matched up this time on Donovan Green instead of Andrew Booth down at the bottom of the screen. Sheridan is a freshman again. Darion Kendrick, their starting corner, not here tonight. They hand it off to Christian Beal Smith. And he's a yard short of the first down. They are in field goal range now, but the way Clemson scores, I, I think you need to go for this. You know, if you're going to match a field goal to a touchdown, it's not going to happen. No, you're not going to match them. I, I do understand trying to get points on the board, though, right here as we tick inside of 30 seconds of the first quarter. Well, here's Nick Skiba. Mentioned had a sensational year 
last year. The 44 yard try. Wind really not a factor. Line drive kick. And it is no good. So Skiba misses. He was 43 for 47 for his career before that kick. And he set the NCAA record by making 34 consecutive field goals the last 11 of 2018. His first 23 last season before he missed a 48 yarder at Syracuse to end that streak. Now that did not look like a, a typical Skiba kick either. No. Right from the foot, it did not look good. So a missed opportunity and Clemson with good field position now. I'm just surprised at fourth and one against Clemson. Why you don't go for it? I agree with you. You know, yeah. field goals aren't going to do you any good. You're already down 14 to nothing. Quick pass out wide. It's Cornell Powell. Dabo Sweeney saluted him when we visited during the week. So he's a fifth-year guy. He's basically been a role player behind a lot of gifted yeah. players. He could have transferred. He stuck around, and he is going to be an impact player this year. And he's one of the leaders in the social justice stuff with Trevor Lawrence and Darian Wrencher, one of the key leaders on this Clemson team. Impressive start for Lawrence and the Tigers. They lead 14 to nothing after a quarter. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. The best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. And just a short distance from Truist Field, you see in the distance, they've set up essentially a drive-in movie theater. They're having a viewing party. Fans not allowed in the stadium, but they're socially distanced. About 350 cars allowed in that lot. They're trying to set up a screen. Boogie Basham knocked it down. You wonder if he had it to do over again. He would have tried to catch it. Yeah, they're trying to get the ball to Brayton Galloway. We talked about the deceptive plays that Clemson loves to run. Trying to slip the screen to tight end, but that's just beautiful work by Basham. He just watched the quarterback. He didn't jump unnecessarily and was able to knock the football down. Third and Dave Clawson said, I hope Boogie winds up being the defensive player of the year in the ACC. He has that kind of talent. Came back part because he wants to be a first round draft pick. Trevor Lawrence turns the corner, goes out of bounds, and has the first down. Picked it up with a yard or two to spare, chased out by Luke Masterson. You know, he is so much more athletic than people give him credit for. I mean, you know he's got the arm talent, the NFL arm, but he's a very good runner and a fast runner. He just doesn't look like he's running fast, but we saw it in the Ohio State game. Excellent runner when he needs to be called upon. He really... Got them in the game, took the lead on his running skills. Wrencher chopped down by Zion Keith. Here's Kevin DeGandhi. Tough way for Mike Norvell to debut if they don't win that one. Darian Wrencher, the ball carrier. A senior who really has become a team leader out of Anderson, South Carolina. He and Trevor Lawrence, best of friends, and together really at the forefront of so much that they had to deal with yeah. in the offseason. The COVID stuff, the racial and social injustice issues. They were behind the drive, we want to play. Trevor Lawrence even spoke with the President of the United States to make that point clear. And now they're trying to manage their team yes. during the season to make sure everybody stays doing what they're supposed to do. Lawrence, there's that rocket of an arm, and he's on target to Galloway to the 32-yard line of Wake Forest and a first down. That's why he's going to be the first pick in the NFL draft. I mean, <laughs> he made... That he made that throw look so easy, opening up to his left side. He, yeah, he had velocity on it, but he put the perfect amount of touch and placed it exactly where you needed to go. He's he's a special talent. It's very obvious. Third catch for Galloway.
19 yards on the play. ETN weaves to the outside and he gets wrestled down by the safety Zion Keith after a gain of three. Well, that's the shortest gain that, that Clemson's had on that little smoke draw play where they kind of sprint out one way and the back goes back the other way. They've had great success on that here in the first half. They hurt Wake Forest badly in the second quarter on a couple draw plays last year. It's just part of that package that makes Clemson so difficult to defend. Already 85 yards rushing for ETN. They bring late pressure for Masterson. He didn't get there and the throws on target to Amari Rogers. There is a flag down. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, second down. You know, one of, one of the things that Travis Etienne needs to continue to work on is his pass protection. Watch him get in here, stick his shoulder right into the blitzing linebacker, keeps that pocket clean for Trevor Lawrence. Got a little help from the tight end Galloway, but again, Travis Etienne taking his game to the next level, continue to grow as a pass receiver, and continue to bit, get better as a pass blocker, beating guys to the spot, using form and technique, because he doesn't have a big physical body. And he has done that. He would say, and the coaches would, that he has gotten better in pass protection. They hand it off to him, and he swung down for a loss. Leon Bergen held on just long enough to dump him. Nice play by the junior from Kissimmee, Florida. Big third down play here for the Wake Forest defense. Again, they came off the disappointment of the missed field goal, but now they've got a chance to get Clemson off the field. Their offense. It'll be about a 55-yard field goal from here. Dabo Sweeney probably wouldn't try that. Third down, 16. This is where you have to be alert also for that screen, a little slip, slip screen to Travis Etienne. Lawrence against the three-man rush. Nice catch, but short of the first down is Joseph Ngata, the sophomore from Folsom, California. Nasir Greer made the tackle, and the field goal team will come on. Yeah, I did get the first down, but that was another one of those NFL throws to the right sideline on a rope that gives yourself a chance to kick a field goal. Smart throw by Trevor Lawrence. BT Potter didn't have a great year kicking field goals last year. 62% is a low number. He's an excellent kickoff man. And that one is a beauty. A draw right down the middle from 42 yards. And the Tigers now lead 17 to nothing. A little bit more than four minutes into the second quarter. Dabo happy to see a good start to the year for his kicker. You're watching Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One, part of Marathon Conference kickoff. Clemson leads 17 to nothing. Donovan Green hoping for a chance to return the kickoff from BT Potter. 74% of his kickoffs last year were touchbacks, and this one will be as well. Certainly, Todd, it hurt Dave Clawson and Wake Forest that they lost Sage Surratt during camp. He decided to opt out of this season due to COVID concerns. One of the best receivers in the country, fifth in the country in yards per game last year, first team all conference, and a difference maker that they don't have. Well, and they kind of thought he might have left after last year, and then he got hurt late in the season and did, decided not to do that, decided to come back and improve his status, and then decided in camp to leave. And Dave said, you know, that one kind of caught us by surprise. We don't hold anything against him. We totally respect his decision. He did think Boogie Basham was going to leave, and Boogie came back. Pressure on Hartman, but there's Donovan Green. He couldn't make the catch. He did well to get free from the coverage. Tyler Davis put the pressure on. Ed Surratt was expected to come back and, and be that vertical threat as he was a year ago. He runs the nine route so well, but I wanted to see him come back and develop as a receiver. 
Clawson said that a lot of guys in the NFL had mid-round grades on them. There were 13 receivers that were drafted in the first two rounds in 2020. That was a record. Uh, but I think he's probably more like a second, third round pick. Hartman in trouble and taken down again by Miles Murphy, impressing as Dabo Sweeney said he would in his debut. Yes, Surratt hurt his shoulder at the end of last year, couldn't have a pro day and go to a combine. So he decided to come back. And Dave Clausen said, I think other good players around the country have used COVID as an excuse to opt out. He said, I think it really was his concern yeah. about COVID. And he said he's a terrific young man, excellent student, was all academic, all ACC last year. Hartman throws, strong throw there. But just short of the first down is Taylor Marin at the 34-yard line. Now they're going to go for it on fourth down on their own 34. No hesitation before the punt unit came out. But here comes Ivan Mora. And I got to put that a little bit on Morin, the wide receiver. He's got to get beyond that marker on that route. I mean, that was a good route, a good throw, but you just can't come up a yard short on a big third down play like that. Would you fake it? They do not. And it's not a very good kick. Straight up in the air. Lands short of the 40. Was touched by Masterson about the 41 yard line. It's a good field position for Clemson again, already leading 17 to nothing. Tomorrow, game six of the Western Conference semifinals from the NBA, the Clippers and the Nuggets. LA up three games to two. That's at 1 Eastern time. 10 a.m. Pacific on ESPN, the Portes and the app. Clippers have never been to the conference finals in their 50-year history, back to when they were the Buffalo Braves. Then Sunday Night Baseball, also Los Angeles. The Dodgers, best record in Major League Baseball. And the Astros, they're playing tonight. They had an ugly history earlier this year. That's tomorrow night at 8 Eastern time. Joe Kelly, Alex Bregman at the center of some unpleasantries. Lawrence avoided the rush, threw on the move. Galloway caught it, but he was out of bounds. Well, we talked about the athleticism of Trevor Lawrence and whether he's running or just eluding pressure. This is a corner blitz. He gets a little bit of a block from ETN, but he eludes it on his own, keeps his eyes downfield, and delivers the football. Just good footwork and pocket presence by Trevor Lawrence. He's 9 out of 13 now. He's completed balls to four different receivers. Second and 10. Takes the immediate swing to Travis Etienne across midfield before he got popped down. No market at the 46. Isaiah Cheney, a backup defensive end, made the stop. Now, Travis's first two years, he had a combined 17 catches. And then last year, he had 37. He's just become more a confident receiver and more utilized in their pass game when you get him in space with that speed and now that lower body strength I mean, he can turn short catches into long games 432 receiving yards last year almost ran into Lawrence bounced off the would-be tackle of Williams and turned it into a solid gain to the 40, pickup of six. Zion Keith made the tackle. Seeing one of these touted freshman backs in the game now, Demarcus Bowman, number one, lined up next to Trevor Lawrence. Unanimous five-star recruit, his first tackle as a Tiger, and he tackled himself. Tripped as he tried to get away from Isaiah Cheney. Bowman out of Lakeland, Florida, 5'10", 190 pounds. The one guy that Trevor Lawrence has not gotten the football to yet is Latson right here. Another one of those big young receivers. They will try to get him involved if the opportunity presents itself. Midway through the second quarter, third down and six. Lawrence steps into the throw, and it's through the hands of Latson. You called it, Todd. But Latson, out of Miami, Florida, unable to catch it. 
I think that was just one that Trevor missed the mark because that ball's got to be thrown more outside. Latson was open. He ran a nice route, and Trevor just missed him, and he knows it. There goes the Heisman. <laughs> <laughs> There's Bill Spires. Son, Will Spires. Bill Spires, former Clemson punter, major league baseball player. His son had a very solid four-year career as a starting punter. Dabo told us he had a great summer camp. Wake Forest came after him. And that'll be a touchback. So an opportunity missed for the wide open receiver. A rear air and throw by Trevor Lawrence. But they're still up. 17 zip. Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One on ABC, is brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit, and Pacific Life, more than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. Some of the folks at the watch party down the street in the fairgrounds. Short distance from Truist Field, where Clemson leads 17 to nothing. Very little has gone well for Wake Forest on offense. And that first play of this drive doesn't start well. It's Kenneth Walker's dropped by KJ Henry and Balin Spector. Well, really good play by Jake Venables in there. He was a blitzing linebacker run blitz. They bring a blitz again, dialed up by Jake's dad. Brent Venables, defensive coordinator, now in his ninth year at Clemson. Donovan Green, the catch. He fought for the first down marker. Didn't quite get there. Now Brent is, has just been so good. Such a perfect fit with Dabo here in Clemson. He loves it. Got two sons on the team as a freshman. Also on the team now. The defensive back, Tyler. Sam Hartman keeps, and it's first down. Just tuning in, Allison Williams reported. James Skalski, ordinarily their Mike linebacker, had to sit out the first half because of a targeting penalty in the right. second half of the national championship game. Here's pressure again. Looked like there might have been some offensive holding. No flags down back behind the line of scrimmage. And a good effort on the catch by Donovan Green but he couldn't get it with Sheridan Jones and coverage when we talked to Dave Kloss and he talked about Brent Venables he says he just doesn't concede any play they want to stop every play this is a broken play which you would think would be easier to stop he dumped it off to Jaquari Roberson and a small loss on the play they also told us something interesting, Clausen and Warren Ruggiero. Jake Venables injured on the play. He said, they said, Clemson does the best job of any team they play at stealing your signals, at knowing what your signals are. It's another reason why they try to go fast. Yep. They spend a lot of time trying to get your si signals. The watch party. Wake Forest fans feel that Trevor Lawrence needs a haircut. He has a very good chance of winning that Heisman Trophy. He's an off to a good start tonight in that direction. You're watching Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One, part of Marathon Conference kickoff. I think that hair has been become part of his signature. No though. doubt. <laughs> I don't think that's going away anytime no. soon. Five-man rush, well blocked for Sam Hartman. Has a man oh. open, and it's dropped. A.T. <laughs> Perry behind the defense from our vantage point. It looked like it hit him right in stride. They've had a chance for a couple big plays tonight, and they haven't been able to make them. Yeah, that's a perfect throw. I mean, that's just got to be a ball caught, particularly in a game like this. You need to get some good things to happen, and you, you blocked it up. You protected your quarterback, third and 11, and... He put the ball where it needed to be, and A.T. Perry just not able to come down with it. You mentioned Sage Surratt opted out. They had a very good receiver, Scotty Washington, last year, who's been in NFL training camp this summer. 
Moore, a much better punt this time, and he gets a nice bounce along the sideline, all the way down to the nine yard line. Well, Trevor Lawrence tonight has uh, done a little bit of everything. He's been accurate throwing the football, had a couple of nice connections with Amari Rodgers, and, and that's encouraging. Even though Rodgers hasn't caught a bunch, he's caught enough. And then Ray Galloway, we talked about him and what he's going to bring to this offense. He's a, a bigger body who can stretch a defense and get vertical, and Trevor Lawrence has found him a couple times down the field with the football. And then, of course, he's run for two touchdowns. So a little bit of everything from the leader, Trevor Lawrence. Starts with ETN behind him. Elected not to pitch it to him. And got tackled by Suleiman Kamara at the 12. The other thing, so far, Lawrence has not forced the issue. You know, he hasn't tried to throw the ball into traffic. He hasn't really made many risk throws so far. And that was an issue early last year, if you remember. He had eight interceptions in the first seven games. Then he kind of corrected it. In the, finals, the final eight games, he threw 22 touchdown passes and zero interceptions. Yeah, that's unbelievable. First seven games, 14 touchdowns, eight interceptions, as Todd said. The last eight games of last year, 22 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Throws the quick slant on target. Amari Rogers, first down, 25-yard line. Well, one of the things he tweaked, one of the things he changed is just which foot he puts back on his stagger. Last year, it was left foot back. This year, it's a right foot back. And it's just, it's a little thing, a subtle thing, but it's something that's brought more comfort to him in the pocket. That's a slant to Ladson from the other side. And the sophomore catch and run out to the 46-yard line. And one of the, the reasons he did that, Todd, is, is for the quick game. I mean, everything now in college in the NFL is so based around the quick throws. Yep. And as a six foot five, six foot six quarterback, it's tough to get the ball out quickly. So he studied Tom Brady and his footwork to try to improve his efficiency there. Here's ETN turning the corner and slipping down as he tried to evade the tackle of Nick Anderson. Yeah, and when he, with a big quarterback like that, a long-legged guy, you don't want to overstride, but you don't want to narrow your base too much either. You want to have a nice, strong, solid base. And I think that stagger step and also just some of the things he's worked on in this offseason, uh, he, he looks comfortable, obviously, right now in this ballgame. He talks about Tom Brady's shuffle footwork, what a great job Brady does just to by an extra moment to get rid of the ball. That's on target. Brandon Spector to the 37-yard line awake, and Clemson on the move with under three and a half minutes to go in the half, already up 17 to nothing. Dabo talked about Trevor taking full ownership, but that was the next step for him. Just take complete ownership of this offense. His pre-snap, his post-snap has improved. His comfort level looks pretty high. Yeah. That's ETN down to the 30-yard line. Quez Williams made the tackle. And I think overall the grade for this new offensive line, four new starters, has been pretty good as well. well they had 18 combined career starts. Entering tonight, and 16 of those belong to Jackson Carmen, the left tackle. The staff, timeout, Wake Forest. That is their third and final timeout of the half, and it is a 30-second timeout. Let's take a look at tonight's Pacific Life game summary. All Clemson to this point. Trevor Lawrence is thrown for 196. He's rushed for both touchdowns. Travis Etienne, 94 yards rushing. And Mari Rogers, four catches, 69 yards. And they're moving again. Seventh play of the drive that began at their own nine. Lawrence the fake. Lawrence the throw. And it's caught by Joseph Nada at the 15-yard line. It's kind of a layer route. Got it was the, the deep receiver. And Trevor Lawrence found him with the football. Trevor very accurate in this drive. And this is the part of the game. The last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the third quarter, where Clemson destroys people. Middle eight, as they call it. This game last year at Clemson was 17 to three, 
And Wake Forest was hanging around. Their offense wasn't doing anything, but their defense was hanging around until this point in the game. And a couple quick touchdown passes from Trevor Lawrence to T. Higgins. And the next thing you know, the game it was game over. Kobe Pace, another freshman's come in and running back. He gets his first action and gets dumped by Quez Williams. No gain on the play. Well, they had some backup wide receivers in that possession. They still threw the ball to and got it. Now they've got their starters back in, and I would say the guy to keep an eye on right here this time, right there, Amari Rogers in the slot. It's been Trevor Lawrence's favorite target so far tonight. Minute and a half to go till the half. Lawrence, corner of the end zone, caught for a touchdown. J.C. Chalk, the senior tight end with his first career touchdown reception. Well, he got lost behind the defense. There were three receivers to the left of the formation, and nobody went deep with the tight end. It really fooled the Wake Forest defense. J.C. Chalk, not really a, a guy they throw the football to very much, and he was wide open in the end zone, and Trevor found him. 13 catches all of last year. Three of those were in their route of Wake Forest, and now he has his first career touchdown. As a senior, he's the grandson of the great Gene Stallings. It was Dabo Sweeney's head coach when Dabo played at Alabama. And I think the teammates know this is a special moment for him with the yeah. way they're congratulating him. Football season is back, and the All-State bus is along for the ride. Todd, what's your All-State protection spotlight tonight? Well, I, again, this offensive line has done a nice job protecting their quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. There was the sack in the very first possession, but after that, they've really settled down. And, and if you give that big guy a lot of time and a, a clean pocket, he's going to find open receivers. So that spotlight belongs to the offensive line. Four new starters, and Trevor Lawrence has had a wonderful first half thanks to that protection. He's in good hands. I see what you did there. Yeah. Bonus for the sponsor. 121 to go in the half. Donovan Green back for the kickoff from BT Potter, but no chance. It was Allison Williams. Sean Todd was just mentioning this young offensive line for Clemson. The one knock on them was giving up that sack on the opening drive. But actually, after that, Dabo Sweeney came over and he told those young guys up front, hey, that's on your veteran quarterback. That was Trevor's fault. He said he tried to force it there. So even that, you can't pin on uh, that young line. How about the shields on the sideline? That... Some guys pull their mask up and the offensive lineman goes with the shield. There's another one. As they get their choice. Jake Venables back on the field. It was shaken up briefly earlier. Didn't look serious at the time. He comes to help stuff the run. Nowhere to go for Christian Beale Smith. So this looks a lot like the last couple of years for the Wake Forest offense yeah. against Clemson. Reagan Upshaw in on the play. His dad, longtime NFL player. First of the half. Clemson getting greedy. They want to score more. Wake Forest is out of timeouts. They've used all three on defense. Stay tuned for the halftime report brought to you by Dish, Kevin DeGandhi, Booger McFarland, and Mark Sanchez. First half analysis from this one, highlights from around college football. You know, we were talking, Todd, before the game. One of the things that stood out to me about college football today and some of the games that have been played prior to today looked like the offenses were behind the defenses. Yeah. That's not the case for this Clemson no. offense tonight. Really clicking. Well, again, when you return two players like Travis Lawrence and or Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne, it's such a great place to start. And uh, yeah, they look to be pretty sharp right now. Harvin under pressure, throws on the run, too high for his intended receiver, A.T. Perry. Not a lot of help for Hartman tonight. Had a couple of chances for big plays in the passing game. Balls that have been dropped. 
He was pressured that time by Jake Venables. They had a little handshake at the end of the, the play. They were actually roommates in the North Carolina, South Carolina Shrine Bowl game. Good friends. Armin swings it out wide. It's Taylor Marin to the 30 yard line. Still about five yards short of the first down. Does Clemson use another timeout? Timeout. Clemson. 30-second timeout, and it is their second of this half. They will be up, Zach's Well, Dabo Sweeney talked about everything that he and all the other coaches around the country have had to deal with, you know, starting back in March when COVID basically brought the world to a screeching halt. He said, I'm a guy who plans everything right. 13 months ahead. I yeah, know what I'm going to do right. every day, what my staff's going to do, the player's going to do for 13 months. He said all of a sudden it became hour to hour, just trying yeah. to deal with the variables, the new information, and adjust, and it looks like they've handled it all very well. Yeah, and he said he never even knew, you know, I don't know if he was being truthful or not, he said he didn't even know what Zoom was, you know, and all of a sudden that becomes your life. I mean, that's the only way you can meet with your coaches, with your players, and so they had to adapt and had to change, and when they got everybody back on campus and got everybody back working, uh, even then they weren't sure if they were going to play. They didn't know if they were going to have a season or not, and... Uh, but they are pretty well prepared, and I think their culture is so strong, and it's been established for so many years, that he felt like that was what was going to win the day for them. Their culture would get them through all of this adversity. And the Morris punt goes out of bounds. Well, they've been tremendous under Coach Sweeney, particularly the last five years. He's the Tiger King, led them to the playoff each of the last five, four times to the title game, two times victorious in 16 and 18 you mentioned five straight outright acc titles well, like 22 him. conference games in a row and, and as you mentioned and, and now he's a positive guy and he gushes all the time when you talk to him but he made a couple statements and you reference one first of all he said it might be the best freshman class they've ever signed and we've oh, seen some of is. those guys right yep. he yep. said usually i wait to say that right. but i'm not waiting that's right this is the best freshman <laughs> class and this may be it's probably the most talented roster we'll wait and see if it's the best team that i've ever had and lawrence gets <laughs> swung down and allison williams is going to address Dabo with the half i guess the question i would have is 24 nothing ahead enough i know this lawrence so. come back play more in the second half. No, I don't think so because I think a, a really important time to come back and play is right out of the locker room to start the third quarter. I think it's important to get that game experience after you've rested and sat down. There's a little slip screen. Second down and long. Again, the deceptive plays. Just get the ball to Travis Etienne in space and all of a sudden now you're out past midfield. Look how quickly they got over the ball after a 26-yard gain. They are so alert to the situations. Those linemen sprinted yep. to the line of scrimmage. They still have one timeout. We talked about the preparations, the disjointed offseason. We asked Dabo Sweeney, what's your comfort level now? Starting the season with a lot of these programs still dealing with some issues is at full comfort yep full comfort nine seconds to go they'll get Braden Galloway out of bounds as expected he's had a big night that's his fourth catch I think Dabble was wondering why Trevor maybe didn't use that timeout if they had one timeout left instead of running up and spiking the ball because now they don't have time to get in field goal range they only have time to throw the ball to the end zone now and you see Travis Etienne coming all the way down to the bottom of the formation out of the backfield right there. Maybe something very quick to the sideline. And it is caught. It'll stop to move the chains. And Dabo uses a timeout. Timeout. Well, they'll try a long one for sure. timeout. That is their third and final of the half. This is a good opportunity for Clemson. You know, you've... So many coaches around the country have said that that's been the hardest part this offseason with all the you know, unique uh, circumstances is trying to figure out how to spend time on the two minute drill in, in certain situations. And this, you know, having an opportunity here with a, about a minute left when they got the ball and, and going down and, and figuring out when to call the timeout. I think this is a really good experience for them early in the season. Yeah. 
And I think there's still some question. Do they call the timeout before they run up and spike it or save it to try to use it like they did to set up the field goal? As it turns out, they've got a shot, but it's a long shot. It would match his longest career field goal, a 52-yarder, which he made in the championship game against LSU. That has plenty of leg. Wow. That would have been good for about 70. I mean, that cleared by an astonishing distance from 52 yards out and a near perfect half for the Clemson Tigers as they lead 27 to nothing. I mean, those, the, look at how high wow. that is when it goes through from 52 yards. 62% you know, field goals, one of the few weaknesses for Clemson last year. And I think Dabble knows maybe we're going to be a little bit better <laughs> kicking field goals after a two for two half from BT Pond. <laughs> And of course, with the COVID protocols here, the Clemson players and staff making sure the Wake Forest people have fully gone by before they cross the field to their locker room. 261 yards passing for Lawrence and a touchdown pass and two rushing touchdowns. ETN ran for 94. The defense held Wake Forest to 113 yards. Pretty good half. Here's Allison with Dabo. Thanks so much, Sean Dabo. Pretty good first half on offense for your guys, and obviously you got some special pieces back there. But what impressed you most on that side of the ball in the first half? Well, just, you know, we, we missed a couple things early, fell down. Trevor took a bad sack, so we just didn't uh, execute on a couple of those drives. But just, just the field position, flipping the field the way we did, had a great punt. We were backed up a couple times, put the great drives together, made some big-time plays. Um, you know, missed a couple, though. Missed a couple plays. Had a bad penalty. Defensively, they've done a great job. Good to see those young guys getting some sacks. They showed up in there pretty quick. We're playing a lot of guys. And then BT, man, two big field goals. So a great execution on the one-minute drive that we had right there, just the, way, uh, just the way we talked about it. How much do you think we'll see Trevor in the second half? I don't know. Uh, we got a long way to go, man. Uh, we got a long way to go, so uh, we're going to get back at it. Thank you, Dabo. Okay. All right, Allison, Dabo, thank you. The half, Clemson 27, Wake Forest nothing. We'll send you to the studio for the Dish Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching Saturday Night Football presented by Capital One. This is the ACC on ESPN season opener and a conference game for both Clemson and Wake Forest. And the first half dominated by the preseason number one team in the country. As we look at the Chick-fil-A first half stats, they lead 27 to nothing. They outgained Wake Forest by 240 yards and had 15 more first downs. Now the good news for Wake Forest, they have eight more yards in the first half than they had the entire game last year, but they have three fewer points. So, but they get to start on offense here to start the second half. Well, you've always been a glasses half full guy. <laughs> I try to be, I try. <laughs> we welcome you back to Winston-Salem. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge down on the field, Todd McShay, Allison Williams. Wake Forest, you know, they just want to take, they'd like to get back in the game if that's yeah. possible. It doesn't seem like it but they'd like to take something good away. What do they need to do to establish something? Well, they, they've got to throw the football. I, I think Clemson is making it so difficult to run the football. They've got everybody around the line of scrimmage. They're run blitzing. Their safeties are moved up. They're going to have to throw the football. I mean, Sam Hartman's going to have to loosen things up, and then maybe they can run it, but they've got to come out throwing to start. And they do. After a play fake, Sam Hartman deep down the far sideline and incomplete. Well defended by Andrew Booth, making his first career start. It was intended for Nolan Gruel. Well, they were really happy with the camp Andrew Booth had. There was some hand fighting by both guys, but that was well played on the sideline by Booth. Darion Kendrick did not make the trip, nor did Mario Goodrich, two of their prominent cornerbacks, so an opportunity for some younger players and there's James Skalski the linebacker who had to sit out the first half because of a targeting call in the second half of the national championship game their second leading tackler from a year ago the leading returning tackler a real fiery leader a very emotional leader of this defense he and Nolan Turner uh, 
They bring pressure. Good pocket. Open man, and this time they catch the ball. And it's to Quarry Roberson breaking free. And he's all the way near the 20-yard line. Keith McGuire, backup linebacker, prevented the touchdown. They spot it right on the 20 of Clemson. And a huge play. 55 yards, 30 of it after the catch from Jaquari Roberson. Nice job by Hartman just kind of reading that coverage and hitting the route right in the seam. First and 10, Wake Forest. And there's Skowski in immediate presence as he drags down Christian Beale Smith behind the line. You can see the safety, uh, Xander's just kind of got a little bit frozen there. And Sam Hartman threw it right past him in that slot. And a big play to the slot receiver for Sam Hartman. One minute gone by third quarter. Good job of avoiding the rush by Hartman. Then he throws it away. Again, Skalski in the neighborhood. I was impressed by Donovan Green, number seven, on that on that long reception. He he came back after the catch was made and made a huge block. Then sprung it for about 20, 25 more yards. He's a physical kid, Todd. 6'2", 198. When he played the last four games last year, he might have been their best receiver. He had to play at the end of the year due to injuries. Surratt, Washington, they also were able to get him that redshirt year, and then you can play the four games. A lot of coaches are doing that now, waiting to the end of the year and letting players play in four, and they can still have a redshirt. Nice play by Sheridan Jones. To drop that play for a loss of a yard. Injury timeout. Tyler Davis is the injured Clemson player. Defensive tackle. Started 13 games last year for Coach Sweeney, the most ever by a true freshman defensive lineman at Clemson. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the endless pursuit of forward momentum. Goodyear more driven. Lake Forest had some forward momentum, but it was stopped. So here's Nick Skiba for his second attempt of the night. He missed badly in the other direction from 44 in the first half. This is from 39, the right hash mark. Jack Murphy is the holder. And that's more like it. One of the best kickers in the country. So Wake Forest is on the board. Early in the third quarter as we bring you this Pacific Life game summary. And a terrific first half for the two stars of their offense, Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. Yeah, again, when you play these guys, you have to pick who you want to try to defend. Who do you want to try to take away? Well, Wake Forest didn't have much luck taking either one of them away in that first half. ETN running wild in the secondary, having the same kind of game he typically has where he averages near or over 10 yards a carry. And Trevor Lawrence, very accurate throwing the football behind really good protection by this revamped offensive line. You see their players that were opting out all over the place for health reasons, for getting ready for the NFL reasons. And you don't begrudge anybody their decision. I mean, obviously, those were tough decisions to make, but Clemson doesn't lose anybody, you know, and Alabama didn't lose anybody. And those are the two teams that a lot of people are saying are probably going to meet in a championship game if we get to that point at the end of the year as well. They need the prohibitive favorites especially without Ohio State playing football, at least now. Kickoff down by Joseph Gata. Time for the Aflac trivia question. Travis Etienne has won back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year awards. You want to know who was the only player to win a Power 5 Conference Player of the Year award in three straight seasons? Travis should be the, obviously the first to do it in the ACC. That's a clue, I guess. Yes, that yes. is. The ACC is Hold a power a clue. Conference. It was not an ACC player. 
Out of the pistol, Lawrence gave it to Etienne straight ahead. And the answer is a man you know well. Here's an, it's another clue. He looks like he could still do it. He if sure he played does. right now. And he probably still could. <laughs> Herschel Walker of Georgia, the SEC Player of the Year in 1980, 81, and 82. I think Etienne has a chance. Probably his biggest competition is the man who keeps handing him the ball. Trevor Lawrence, who throws on the run on target. Amari Rogers across midfield with a first down. You know, a lot of times you think it's hard for a quarterback, a right-handed quarterback, to throw rolling to his left. But actually, you get your shoulders around more naturally when you roll to the opposite way. That's a beautifully thrown ball, very accurate on the move, rolling to his left. Blitz. Lawrence got it off, got it to Ngata. Does a little dance to try to shake Luke Masterson. And he's down at the 29-yard line. Uh, Trevor does it as well as any long-legged quarterback that I've ever seen, though. The, the, the ability to roll left and flip his hips back. I remember, I actually watched the game that you guys did against Texas A&M last year. That deep throw, the touchdown that he made when he was rolling, sprinting, really, to his left, flipped his hips and threw the ball accurately down the field for the touchdown. He's special when it comes to rolling to his left side. Yeah, I agree. Up to 301 after the 19 yarder to Ngata. Looks around, finds a man. It's Travis Etienne. Well, Todd McShay, we actually have the play, and thank you for watching. We appreciate it. <laughs> Against Texas AM. I believe that was the opener last year, was it not? I remember it was very hot. It was it was early. It was early. It might not, not have been the opener. They played Georgia Tech in the opener last year. Yeah, just yeah, you're you're right. I mean, first of all, he eluded the pressure, then has the presence to get out, keep his eyes downfield, and make that accurate throw on the move. A little trickery, a little bobble by Brandon Spector as he took the pitch, but he still caught it and he almost scored. Had one tackle to break and he didn't, but still a nice play and it's first and goal for Clemson. It goes as a rush of 18 yards for Brandon Spector. Kind of looks familiar wearing that number 13, being the slot receiver for Clemson. Hunter Rempro, of course, wore that number. Adam Humphreys. Yeah. Tyler Grisham before those two, who's now the new That's wide right. receiver coach. That's right. At Clemson, had been on the staff, but promoted to wide receiver coach. There is ETN lunging and in for a touchdown. <laughs> Travis Etienne with his 57th career rushing touchdown, his 63rd total touchdown. Both are most among all active players in college football, and the progressive pylon camera confirms it's a touchdown. Well, he, again, you see him run through the tackle of Luke Masterson, who's a 220-pound safety. Just powered his way to get the ball into the end zone. Extra point is good by B.T. Potter. And Clemson now leads 34-3. Travis Etienne over 100 yards for the 18th time in his career, up to 102. This week, college football is coming together to recognize the impactful work of great teachers all over the country, the way they've been performing their essential duties, particularly during this extraordinarily difficult backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic. And on behalf of the college football playoff and ESPN, we want to honor teachers who have been doing their part to keep kids learning. We have $1,000 worth of Donors Choose gift cards that teachers can use towards school resources to help their students. And tonight we're going to send that donation along to a great place, Cathedral High School in Boston. There's Jim Quinn, longtime math teacher and a mentor to other teachers at the school in the city of Boston 17 straight years 100% of the students at Cathedral have graduated and gone on to college student body 88% black and Latino 45% of the households it's a touchback on Potter's new kickoff have English as a second language every student there qualifies for free lunch and tuition assistance uh, basically they get out of the public schools, they come into this wonderful place, and yeah. a lot of them are the first person in their family to graduate from high school, 
and go on to college. Yeah. So uh, Todd it's McShane impressive. was right down the street from Cathedral, and uh, we're all very proud to support yeah. a special place. Absolutely. That's a great great choice and a great place to, to send that to. Yep. Yeah. And that money will be put to good use. On first down, Sam Hartman to Taylor Marin, and he gets nine, Todd McShay. Yeah, I live three blocks away from Cathedral, and I see these, these young people every single day, and, and the way they carry themselves is really impressive. My son goes to, to basketball camp there. I, I go and throw passes to some of the receivers, you know, when they, when they work a, across the street at Peters Park, and they're nothing but respectful and appreciative of what they have, and I'm really glad that we get to help them out because it, it really is a special place, and, and, and what they've done is remarkable. Kenneth Walker, the ball carrier, and I think it's pertinent for what we've been talking about tonight, what's going on in the country. Right. We talk about uh, racial inequality, and one of the steps toward equality is education, right. and they're providing a world-class education at this high school. Not only are they all going to college, but a lot of them are going to top 100, top 50 universities in America. And they're all getting assistance, too. It's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. It, it is a special, special place, and God bless uh, uh, Mr. Quinn, Dan Carmody, the headmaster, Paul Chisholm has been the head of the board of trustees. Uh, here's Walker trying to turn the corner. Basically, almost all of the money that goes to pay for those kids to go to school there is raised by donors, fundraisers, to provide them an opportunity that they otherwise wouldn't have. It's uh, changing lives. And, Sending a lot of wonderful young people out into the world with a great education. Three-man rush. Hartman throws to the far sideline. Taylor Marin has been a big factor tonight. They got banged out of bounds by Fred Davis. Marin, another guy who will have an opportunity this year. He played in only one game last year. In fact, played four snaps at Clemson, and that was it. He's made six catches tonight, first six of his career. Hartman got away for a moment. Might have wished he didn't. Mike Jones couldn't get him down, but then Hartman got blasted by several others, including Miles Murphy, one of those Dabo talked to Allison Williams about at the half. He predicted Murphy and Brzee would make their presence known very early, and they have. Well, Two Mike, top recruits on that defense. Yeah, Mike line. Jones came on the outside blitz. He was the first guy. Couldn't get him wrapped up. And right there, you see the added weight and strength of Sam Hartman to shake off that first tackle. But too many white shirts there to do anything about it. Hartman's gone out. Michael Kern has come in. Red shirt freshman backup quarterback from Lake Nona High School in Orlando. And the long holding of the ball on that mesh and the strike to... Taylor Marin, and that'll be one and done as Hartman is back in, but a nice throw by yeah. Kern. Really well executed. It's kind of an RPO play. You put that ball in the belly, and you ride, you ride, you ride, and if those linebackers commit to the run, you pull that thing out and throw right behind him. And coming right off the bench, cold, it's a pretty good throw. Hartman gives it to Kenneth Walker, and he's chopped down. Mike Jones hit him first, and then Landon Zanders... Finished him off. You're not going to run east and west or sideways against this defense. They're, they're too fast. You saw 36 there, Zanders. He, he's like a Cam Chancellor. I mean, he, he is a big physical dude that also can cover. That reminds you of Paul Amalu with the hair, too. <laughs> Hardman pulls it down and got stood up. I believe that was Skalski. No, it wasn't Skalski. It was Lamonte Bentley with Skalski nearby. Sam took a real shot that time. You know, fighting for extra yards. It's a fourth down play. He's trying to get to the marker. And uh, took a real shot. And they turn it over on downs. Midway through the third quarter. Wow. 34 to 3, Clemson. Well, this flashback takes us back to October 9, 2008. Clemson, the preseason pick to win the ACC. They lost to Wake Forest. Remember, that's the last time they lost to the Demon Deacons. 12-7, that dropped Clemson to 3-3. Three and three. And a couple of days later, 
Dabo Sweeney, little known wide receiver coach, replaced Tommy Bowden. That was Tommy Bowden's last game. Gave it to Dabo on an interim basis. First play of this possession is a run by Darian Rencher, and Dabo made it clear what he expected on day one. And as I told him, as I told him, I gave everyone an opportunity. If you can't do this, 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 and this, then you need to go get your stuff out of your locker and head on out of here. And your scholarship is honored. But if you show up on that practice field tonight, you better be, you better be all in. And I need these players to be all in. And uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> He's been saying that for 12 years, the all-in mantra. Trevor Lawrence, great play, fake on target. Davis Allen, another one of that talented tight end group. Big gainer, Zion Keith brought him down at the Wake Forest 27-yard line, a gain of 42. Well, a nice job by Trevor Lawrence using his eyes, too. He had two wide receivers to the other side of the formation. He held the safety to that side and then came back to his streaking tight end down the left side of the field. 18 yards after the catch for Allen, sophomore from Calhoun, Georgia. Back to the run with Darian Rencher to the 22-yard line. Of course, a lot of Clemson fans, who is this guy? He's not even a coordinator. They went 4-2 and two the rest of the way, which was good, not great. But the administration there believed in him, brought him back, and beat South Carolina that last that game. I think that, lot. that helped a lot. Yes, and, it did uh, win the big rivalry game, which yep. is not going to be played this year due to the restructuring of the schedules. And that's a real shame. It's one of the great rivalries in college football. Darian Rencher. Darian Rencher. Inside the 20. How many times do you find yourself saying, but given everything else that's going on in the world, uh, is it really that big a deal? I mean, at the end of the day, it's a football rivalry. But yeah, with all the troubles and real suffering in the world, they'll get back together again, hopefully, next year. That depends a little bit on where you live, too, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because the rivalries in this part of the world mean a little bit more. They sure do. And that one is one of the best. Third down and two, approaching five minutes to go in the third quarter. Clemson leading 34 to three. Right up the middle, there's Kobe Pace again. And he's down to the two yard line. Strong run by the true freshman in his first college game. Yeah, they think these two freshmen are going to be the, the newest version of Thunder and Lightning. And this one uh, here, Pace, is the more physical of the two backs. 5'11, 215. He gets the call again. Tried to run over two defenders and could not. He's from Cedartown High School in Cedartown, Georgia. He's also a fine basketball and baseball player and a linebacker. Chase Jones made the stop. Second and goal. Now Trevor Lawrence has scored a couple times down in this part of the field with that fake to the back. Oh, he had trouble with the snap. Might have been distracted by the motion and waving the motion man across. And A.J. Williams was there as Lawrence got the ball back to drop him back at the 12-yard line. The snap was a little bit off to his left, and it was a hard snap. But I think he just got distracted, took his eyes off the football, and it just kind of disrupted the whole play. Fortunate to just fall on the football. So third down and goal. Lawrence 22 out of 27 for 351. Interesting that they've got this freshman back in. This is almost assuredly a passing play, but you got pass protection responsibilities for a freshman. And it's a rocket, and it's incomplete. Diving attempt made by Frank Ladson, who couldn't come up with it. And the field goal team will come out. It's already been a good night. For BT Potter, two for two in field goal tries. From 42 and 52, Junior out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. The 29 yard field goal. And it's 37 to 3. 
And a good start to the season for Dabo and the Clemson Tigers. You're watching Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One. You're watching Saturday Night Football, presented by Capital One, part of Marathon Conference kickoff. Heisman Trophy front runner Trevor Lawrence off to a great start in 2020. 22 for 28, 351 and a touchdown. He's also rushed for two. There's Aiden Swanson. And Donovan Green, the return. Here's Allison Williams. Hey there, Sean. Sorry about that. We saw Sam Hartman, Wake Forest quarterback, get pretty banged up last time he was on the field. You could tell he was pretty shaken coming off. I'm told he is okay physically, but given the score and the situation in the game here, they're going to go to back up Michael Kern in the game. Yeah, he took a shot. I mean, there's no question. He was fighting for that first down. He was kind of up, standing upright and uh, got drilled. It was a clean hit, just a very hard hit. So that's the end of the night for Hartman. He certainly seems to be lucid and conversational there on the sideline. Sure, they put him through the concussion protocol. We were here two years ago when they played Notre Dame. He was 175 pounds. He didn't even look that big. And he said to us yesterday, yeah, I was little. And uh, on the left, the picture from his freshman year. And there's what he looks like now on the right. The only thing he doesn't like about being 215 pounds is he says he sweats a lot more. Everywhere he goes, he just sweats. Well, the longer hair and the beard probably doesn't help that either. I'm familiar with the sweating thing. Yes, you are. <laughs> Kern throws on the run, incomplete. Tenant for Nolan Rule and well played by Fred Davis. Yeah, I think uh, they're smart. You know, that's a Wake Forest program has won at least seven games each of the last four yeah. years. They've gone seven, eight, seven, eight. There is a flag down on that last play. Dave Clawson thought they were poised to have a 10 or 11 win season Defensive last year holding. before the injuries hit. Number 20, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. And Anthony Williams called for the hold, but you know you have a lot of football to play if you're Wake Forest, and keeping your number one quarterback healthy is yep, a good no idea. No doubt, no doubt. He's a good player too. I don't think there's a drop off. You know, Jamie Newman obviously transferred to uh, to Georgia and then opted out. But I don't think there's a drop off from Newman to Hartman when Hartman's help. Here's Christian Beal Smith. And in fact, two years ago, Hartman won the job over others, including yeah, Jamie Newman. They deemed him to be the better quarterback at the time. Newman was dealing with some injuries himself, but Hartman earned it. Played almost the entire year before he broke his leg late in his true freshman season. Hearn over the middle, incomplete, tried to get it to Blake Whitehart. And almost found the umpire, Michael Wooten. Kind of thought it did. <laughs> yeah, might have. Oh, yep, right off the back side. Yeah. Tough gig in there. Yeah. Kern looks to the sideline. Yeah, we were talking in the break, just the amazing amount of talent that this Clemson team has. And to see these two freshmen lined up next to each other, that defensive line. It's crazy. They're just grown men. You know, and we saw the, the freshman back in there on that last touchdown drive. He's a grown, grown looking man. But uh, they, this recruiting class is very, very special, and uh, they're just plug and play right now. And Brian Brzee, number 11, number one in the country well, among all high school players last year, according to Rivals.com. Miles Murphy rated number three overall in the country by ESPN. Ivan Moore on the punt with two minutes to go in the third quarter. You know, 15 of those recruits were mid-year enrollees, so they were there to go to spring football. They didn't have a full spring. They had nine days of spring football, but that was it. But they still were able to learn football and have football meetings, and then when they were able to work out, they were able to work on their technique and fundamentals, and, you know, to have guys like that that were so committed at such a young age to make themselves better in the fundamental way. Illegal formation. 
on the offense, five men in the backfield, five-yard penalty, re-kick, fourth down. Interesting to see who is the quarterback when they do come on the field on offense. Backups. And we talked to Dabo Sweeney the other day. He gushed about those two he guys, too, didn't Don't he? miss the pregame warm up, he said, and get the cameras on all three of these quarterbacks. Tyson Pumachan is one of the backups. He's number seven. All Dabo said is to me, he's a bigger Russell Wilson. That's not high praise. No. He said, and I know I coached against Russell Wilson three times. Let's see if he gets the first crack at replacing Lawrence in this game. Morris punt again, drifts out of bounds. No chance for Amari Rogers to catch him. I'm about a year away from being able to pronounce number five's last name. Well, it looks like it might be DJ. And we're going to try it ourselves, and we'll get better as we go along, we hope. Uli Anga Wale. Uli on the well, he looked like one of the most talented young quarterbacks I've ever seen in pregame warmups. I mean, he's yeah. 250. Yeah. He moves around really well, and he has a rifle. I mean, it, yeah, I don't know how they're going to handle this quarterback situation moving forward, but that's you know, that's next year's issue. Well, that's what when Dabo was talking about him. He said we've never recruited one like that. I mean, you're talking about a place that had Deshaun Watson <laughs> and Trevor Lawrence. We've never recruited a guy that big and that fast that that is that refined at playing the position. He can run, he can throw it 75 yards, according to Dabo. His first snap was given to Darian Rencher, and here's Kevin Nagandi. <laughs> oh, you're a good man, Kevin. We'll see Louisville next Saturday night, ABC primetime against Miami. Uyunga Valle on target to Will Brown, his first catch of the game. He had won all of last year. He's a junior. So Lawrence's night is over, 22-28 for 351, a passing touchdown and two rushing touchdowns. We're just going to call him DJ. That's what I'm calling The next few snaps. Yeah. Amen. There's Demarcus Bowman across midfield with another apparent first down for Clemson. And Dabo said about DJ, we've had guys like Deshaun and Trevor who grab it mentally from the beginning, but this guy does too, and he's 250 with bigger arm talent than Deshaun. He can run. He has great arm talent, and he can really move at 250. He played at a big time school. He played at St. John Bosco yep. in Southern California. So he's very well prepared, well coached in high school. If only they had more talent, more depth. Demarcus Bowman <laughs> shoved out of bounds at the 44 yard line. There is another flag now. Well, you know, it's success begets success, All right? And, <laughs> and in recruiting. Number 57, 10 yard penalty, first down. In that's recruiting, freshman, that is, by the way, who held Paul Teo. That, that's totally the case. Okay, so a couple years ago, they had that defensive front. Three of them get drafted in the first round, right? So now the next thing you turn around, they've got these freshman defensive linemen, top prospects in the country. You had Deshaun Watson, you have Trevor Lawrence. Now you got two quarterbacks that you get signed that are, you know, that outstanding prospects, could have gone anywhere the in the country. Quarter. Success begets success. And, well, Clemson's enjoying that. Yeah, people want to win and they want to be in a great culture, and Clemson has both. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and word from our ABC stations. There's a look at the national championship trophy on display here earlier today. Game day was here at Truist Field. In Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where Clemson and Wake Forest go to the fourth quarter. 37-3 Tigers. Here's Demarcus Bowman. Turned the corner, went out of bounds, close to midfield. And, of course, that national championship trophy will be presented in Miami on January 11th. And 
It'll be interesting. We talked to Dabo Sweeney the other day. Of course, right now, at least, the Big Ten's not playing. The Pac-12's not playing. There's been some talk maybe they might start up in November, December. We said to Dabo, would you be willing to wait, push that playoff back? Said, absolutely not. So we're going full steam ahead, and we fully expect it will take place. The playoff as scheduled. Here's a Joe, a Joe, another one of the newcomers, a part of the best freshman class. Dabo says he's recruited. He's a Canadian from the Edmonton area. And Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, who's not prone to overstatement, called him freakish, his <laughs> talent level. And they need that because they don't have enough good players. He's 6'3", 215, was a high jumper, basketball player in high school. Only played two years of high school football, one in Canada, one in Clearwater, Florida, Clearwater Academy. E.J. Williams, another freshman from Phoenix City, Alabama. He was the intended target there. And Dabo says he has superstar type talent. Same high school as Justin Ross, who they pulled out of the state of Alabama, who we feel is a superstar when no he's doubt. healthy. I heard some good news today talking to Ross Taylor who does a great job as the sports formation director of football at Clemson. He said Justin had surgery on the spine and neck in the neck area and apparently he's progressing very well already doing some light activity and it is hope that he'll be able to resume his football career. Will Spires hangs up the high punt. Jalen Marin the Clear catch at the 18 yard line. Well, that music can only mean one thing it's Monday Night Football, and it kicks off with our annual Week One doubleheader this Monday. That's September 14th. Ben Roethlisberger back in action. The Steelers taking on Saquon Barkley and the Giants. Debut for Coach Joe Judge. That's at 7 Eastern. Then Denver and the Titans from the Mile High City. Both games are on ESPN. The Port Taste, the ESPN app, special edition of Monday Night Countdown, kicks off our coverage at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific. We wish our friends and colleagues well, new Monday Night Football team. Steve Levy, Lewis Riddick, Brian Greasy, and we wish our producer, Phil Deacon, well. right. was with our group right. last year. Phil's gone on to Monday Night Football. We're delighted to be working with Josh Hoffman this season. But Excited for all of those guys to have that opportunity, and I'm sure they'll do a fantastic job. Yep, I think so too. Michael Kern, play fake after he rushed for seven yards. He throws. Hot. Far sideline by A.T. Perry. Finally shook Levy and Greasy and got with some real pros. Yeah, you were with them last year. You, you insisted on bringing your own producer, which I'm not surprised. So Josh Hoffman has come with you to our group. Kern surrounded, dances away to the right. Boy, he's looked good. Throws on target to Brandon Chapman, a tight end. You know, Sean, it's probably worth going back to the conversation about the playoffs, the Big Ten, if the the Pac-12, if that's feasible, you know, the Big Ten presidents are meeting, have a vote. If it goes through tomorrow, uh, you know there is a chance that they could try to be ready to play sometime in October, and with the hopes of still being involved in it. You know, it should be noted that the SEC doesn't even start till September 26, so they're still two weeks away from playing. Uh, so potentially, if the Big Ten is not that far behind. If it does work out that way, they might be able to play a somewhat of a, a conference schedule only and get themselves in position to still be included. It's 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 an unusual year all the way around, right? Please so sure nothing should surprise us at this point going signal. forward. I think it's the only way that it makes sense, though. Uh, playing in the spring to me makes absolutely no sense. There will yeah. be a hundred or so of the top players. Right in the country, if, if you're asking them to play in the spring, they're going to say, "Well, you know, thanks, but no thanks." You have to be able to play for a championship, and if you're playing that late in the year, then you're asking them to come back and either play college football next year, or to go to the NFL and play six, a 16-game schedule. And the human body's just not built to to withstand right. that. Right. At Perry, the catch, and Wake Forest. On the move here, led by the backup quarterback, Michael Kern. Lake Nona High School in Orlando. 
Here's Kenneth Walker turning the corner. He's a sophomore, a good freshman year last year, averaged 5.9 yards per carry. Their school record for a freshman running back. Joseph Charleston made the tackle for Clemson. Yeah, I agree with what you guys are saying. If the Big Ten and Pac-12 want to start, fine, but play a compact schedule and uh, try to get involved in the playoff if they... And I think we're really only talking about the Big Ten right now because when you listen to to the Pac-12 talk, you know, they, they feel like they're making advances with the rapid test that they can test every day, but I don't know that they've talked about being able to play till a little bit later. So I don't know if that, you know, if that figures in the same. I think it has to be a mid-October start for it to be realistic to be involved in what's going on postseason long. Kern fired to the end zone, battle for possession, and ruled an incomplete pass. It's an incomplete pass. Ja'Cory Roberson thought he had a touchdown, at least was trying to convince the officials that he did, and he did not. Nope. Well, could they be ready in a month? Um, obviously, I think most of these football programs, players are staying in good shape. When they're practicing. practicing. You know what I mean? 20 uh, hours I a week. Jim Harbaugh said, you know, a week ago, he said, we could be ready in two weeks to play. Now, you know, that's Jim, and he's a he's a, a ball coach. But I think that if the incentive was there and they could do it safely, yeah, I think they could get ready a lot sooner than, than later. Well, Nick Skiba clangs a... 31-yard field goal off the right upright. So rough start to the season for the All-American Skiba. Still 37 to three. Notre Dame joins ACC football for the first time ever and can compete to win the ACC championship. Do they have what it takes to break Clemson's five-year title streak? A lot of people think they do. Notre Dame defeated Duke in the opener for those two teams in South Bend today. First play of this possession, and it's Kobe Pace, the freshman again. Kez Williams made the tackle. Clemson almost the unanimous choice to win the ACC in the preseason poll. They got 132 out of a possible 134. First place votes, the Irish playing this one year a full conference member in football. Got the other two. No divisions this yep. year, Todd, so it's just the top two winning percentage. You're going to go head-to-head, -head, so they might play a couple times. They could, you know, and, and two years ago we had Clemson-Notre Dame in a playoff game, and Brian Kelly thought his team had come a long way and was ready to compete against a team as talented as Clemson and really didn't pan out that way. And, uh, you know, right now I still don't know that they would measure up with Clemson on paper. But you play them in South Bend in November, and that levels the playing field potentially a little bit more. Still going to have their work cut out for them against this super talented Clemson football team. And a much anticipated game on November 7th. Oyango Lale ahead to the 28 yard line. You're saying that very well. Yeah, I'm impressed. Right well, practice makes perfect. Pretty much been repeating it to myself during all these commercials. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Still Tempo. battling this mask. Yeah, are yeah, you still wearing the mask? I, you sound much more smooth than you did I, in the pregame. No, I actually got a call right after, right after I fumbled that entire intro. Was um, it was from a GM in the NFL. I said, "Listen, we don't mind. We'll send you some masks. But just clean it up. We're cool." <laughs> I thought it was just to match your very nice suit that you're wearing here today. You yeah. are in the return of the punt. Well, no, you had a different mask on earlier. You had a beige one. So this one does seem to fit you better. No time to weigh in. Sorry, Todd. Time out. Back in a moment. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. Number one, Clemson leading Wake Forest, 37 to three, 9.08 to go. 
Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, Todd McShay, Allison Williams, our producer Josh Hoffman, our director, the birthday boy, Scott Johnson. Happy birthday, Scotty J. Leading our crew tonight. Thank our crew. Always have to work very hard and even harder with uh, all the COVID protocols and restrictions. Kearns pass a little bit too deep for A.T. Perry. A lot of other backups in the game now for Clemson. You know, they brought 80. The ACC changed the rule of being able to bring 72 on a road game to 80. Not sure if Dabo is going to get to play all 80, well, but I'm sure he's trying. 62 so far tonight. Yeah, he's trying. Last year, they averaged 76 players played per game. That was 12 more per game than any other program in the country. Nice move after the catch. Jaquari Roberson trying to take it to the end zone. He got run down by Tyler Venables. As yeah. Todd mentioned earlier, he's another one of the sons of Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator for Clemson. Well, and he's got some speed. I mean, you could see the catch-up speed to make that tackle. A little shaken up at the end of the play, but... Tyler was a quarterback in high school the last three years, and uh, Brent told me when I talked to him on the phone, he said the guy can really run. Takes after his mom, yeah, but he can exactly really what run. He told me. Yeah. <laughs> Brent Venables. He and his wife Julie have the two sons on the team. They also have two daughters. Please and he has set the said. Play clock to 40 seconds. I mean, how cool would it be? Both clocks on my signal. To to have two of your sons playing on your, your defense, right? Yeah. And coaching him every day. It's awesome. It really is. And uh, Brent Venables has said, you know, he knows he's been contacted a number of times over the years by teams interested in interviewing him, maybe hiring him to be a head coach. And he said, I know eventually I'm going to either have to do this or they're going to stop calling. I'm not yeah. sure they're going to stop calling. Yeah. But uh, I think he's getting closer to being a head coach. Jeff Scott, longtime co-offense coordinator, left after last year to become the head coach at South Florida. Turn to the corner of the end zone, incomplete. Well, and I think I think as we take a look at the end of this play, great effort by Donovan Green trying to get one foot down. Makes the catch, but I don't think he gets a foot down in the field of play. Nope, out of bounds. But I think, you know, when Clemson was such a, the culture, the community, such a great place to work, great place to raise your family. When his kids were young, his boys were young playing high school football, I don't think the idea of moving them was that attractive. Now that they're in college and a little bit older, uh, you know, I think he's probably a little bit more open to that idea. But he also still has one of the, you could count on one hand, you know, jobs that are better than the job that he has. He's the highest paid defensive coordinator in college football. And uh, two and I think 2.5 he makes, which I think is, uh, it's not Blackledge money, but it's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Justice Ellison just got his first carry as a member of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Kern sacked, flag down. Jordan Williams there. Holding. And they'll probably turn it down by virtue of the loss on the sack yardage. See the referee, Riley Johnson, suggesting to Dabble uh, it'll be fourth down if he turns Holding. down. Holding. Offense number 55. Penalties decline. Fourth down. But it's not like the old days, too, when assistant coaches, you know, financially, right? you know, you almost had to take a head coaching right. job because the money was so much better. But what the assistants now, if you're happy where you are, yep. and both Venables and Tony Elliott have said. Set the game clock to 740. They only want to go someplace where you have a chance to you know, kind of replicate what they're doing at Clemson. They both want to reproduce that, that culture and the philosophy. And you have to have an administration that's, that's very right. supportive of that. Yeah, that, that's a big part of it. I mean, your athletic director, your president, all have to be pulling in the same direction, and they certainly have that at Clemson. They spend a lot of money there on their football program. Skiba. 34 in a row at one point. Missed a couple tonight, but that one's good from 42. And it's 37 to 6. Makes it a 31 point game for those keeping track. 7.20 to go, fourth quarter.
Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. The best part of every kickoff is the drive that comes next. Go further with Goodyear, more driven. Arnold Palmer, the king. The first in a long line of great golfers to come out of Wake Forest. And a text message earlier this evening from the two-time U.S. Open champion, Curtis Strange, oh. proud alum of Wake Forest. Billy Andrade watching the game tonight, now thriving on the champion tour, so many others. The kickoff down to Cornell Powell decides to return it. Then he gets swung down at the 15-yard line. Tomorrow, Game 6 of the Western Conference NBA Semifinal, the Clippers and the Nuggets. L.A. up three games to two, but the Nuggets won the last one. And remember, they were down 3-1 to one to the Utah Jazz in the first round, came back to win the series. That's at 1 Eastern time, followed by the men's final of the U.S. Open for Eastern time. Alexander Zverev and Dominic Team in the final, each looking for his first Grand Slam title. Men's preview show presented by Mercedes-Benz at 3.30 Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. There is a German, he'd be the first German to win the Open since Boris Becker in 1989. There's Will Sweeney taking the ball from Tyson Pumachan, the third quarterback of the night for Clemson. He's a Redshirt freshman from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Saw limited action last year. Not enough to lose the red shirt. He appeared in three games last year. Took 43 snaps, went six for 12 passing. He sets up a little bubble to E.J. Williams, a freshman from Phoenix City, Alabama. Tyreek Hardeman made the tackle for Wake Forest. Six and a half to go. Clemson in control, 37 to six. Now to win their 12th straight against Wake Forest, which is their longest active winning streak against any opponent. And they're gonna win their opener for the sixth straight year and for the 11th time in Dabo Sweeney's 12 full seasons as the head coach, Marcus Bowman. Frustrated, he couldn't break free. He's part of a deep running back room that includes Darian Wrencher, the senior. And what an impressive young man he oh, is. Man. And he is really at the forefront of all of the social issues among the Clemson football players. Led a peaceful demonstration in June. Yeah, I was so impressed with him on the phone and and uh, you know Trevor Lawrence one of the last questions we asked him the very good friend with Darian Wrencher what have you learned about leadership from Darian Wrencher there you see a quote that Darian gave us but Trevor Lawrence told us that he learned from Darian what it looks like to bring people together and I really think that that's Darian feels like that's his calling to bridge and bring people together and bring people together on this team and he's done that and, and also you know, he was the guy that first started reaching out to players around the country, along with Trevor Lawrence, and uh, just an impressive, impressive guy. A.J. Williams, an interception. Rolling on the field is an interception by Wade Forrest. First down, media timeout. He did my job for me. <laughs> But a very cleanly played game, especially for an opener. Only four total penalties, and this is the first turnover of the game by either team. Pumachon's pass intercepted by A.J. Williams, redshirt freshman. He got just 36 snaps last year. It's the first interception of his career. He's out of Bamberg, South Carolina. They go deeper down the quarterback depth chart. Mitch Griffiths has come in, true freshman out of Broad Run High School in Ashburn, Virginia. And Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday he had a tremendous yeah. training camp. Really, they knew he was good coming in, but he's even better than they thought. Well, if you're Dabo Sweeney, Brent Venables, this is a great teaching moment right now for your defense. 
no matter who's in the game, it's a sudden change situation. The game is in hand. Can you come on the field and get a stop here and not let them take advantage of the turnover? It doesn't matter what the score is. This is your opportunity to come out here and put a stop to the momentum that Wake Forest had after the turnover. And right now it's third and long. Bringing up Shaw with the sixth sack for Brent Venable's defense. Again, Brent's not going to concede any play. I mean, he's going to press cover. He's going to bring pressure. He cares what the score is. <laughs> he absolutely he does. Just to Ellison around the corner. Oh, and then it looked like a late hit. Yeah, I haven't seen a flag yet on that. Yeah, I think there was yeah, one Yeah, he, he knew it, too. Malcolm Green. That had two late hits, actually. That one was personal foul. A week late. Late hit out of bounds by number 21 on the defense. Penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Teaching moments. All these things right now are teaching moments. Playing a lot of young guys. You're giving them an opportunity to get a big stop here in the last five minutes of the game. And you can't have careless mistakes like that. And Malcolm Green will learn from it. He's a, a very promising, talented freshman out of Richmond, Virginia as well. So it's first and 10 after the penalty. Wake Forest just inside the 15. High snap. Griffiths had to go up for it. And Justice Ellison got dumped by Keith McGuire. Now Malcolm Green just got called for that penalty. It wasn't even on the depth chart that we got. Right. So we'll get John Madry, our crack statistician here tonight, to get us the update on how many Clemson players have played Tonight, Davos said we have a lot of good players. They come hard to uh, practice and work hard, and we're going to get them all in there, and they do. Elijah Turner's also into the game. Griffiths running out of time, throws it away. You know, just going back to, to Brent Venables and how they continue to put pressure on you, no matter who they have on the field. I thought it was interesting. Dave Clawson was talking about Brent, and he says, you know, once he gets the game in hand, all he wants to do then is, is to become the best defense in the country. So <laughs> he's not going to ever stop coming after you. He's not going to ever stop trying to press you and, and take everything away because he wants to win first and foremost. Then he wants to dominate you. And uh, that's what they're trying to do here in this in this last possession. Top 10 in the country in total defense each of the last five years. Second to Alabama in scoring defense, and ultimately that's what it's all about. They're trying to throw a fade, uh, fade there to Nolan Grew, and it was incomplete with the Anthony Williams in coverage. It's situations like this that allow them to, to grow up the young players, yes. if you will. You know, I mean, yeah, think right. about it. A.J. Terrell last year, first-round pick for the Falcons. Tanner Muse, third-round pick for the Raiders. Kayvon Wallace, fourth-round pick for the Eagles. And Dabo, when we were talking to him on Wednesday, said, this might be the best back seven that, that I've ever had. And it's just because they have the opportunity in the second half of games when they're blowing teams out to get these young players ready for situations like this. To the end zone, it goes and incomplete. Broken up by Fred Davis. There is a flag down. Intended for Donald Stewart, a graduate student, just transferred here from Stanford. Defensive pass interference number two. That's an automatic first down. See, a lot like Alabama, a lot like Georgia, the way they play defense here with so much press coverage, they're always going to have their hands on you. They, I mean, they are they are daring officials to call pass interference every time the ball is thrown up like that. And they, did, they could have called it the play before. They did not. That time they got Fred Davis on the wide side of the field. But they are very handsy, very physical, a lot of contact with receivers. But that's how they teach it. That's how they coach it. And they just do it play after play and know you're not going to call interference or DPI every play. Another high snap for Griffiths. He managed to play it on the bounce, and then it was too high. Was Taylor Marin. Griffiths not tall, just 5'11". Uh, some of these snaps are just bad snaps. He's trying to make the best of it.
Lauren Jovanovic comes out of the game. Rivers all stayed in Virginia in high school last year. Hands it off to Justice Ellison. One freshman giving it to another. Niles Pinckney made the tackle. He's the gray beard of that defensive yeah. line for Clemson. He's taken on a leadership role with so many young players around him. Graduate student. Number 44. Third team all ACC last year. He already has two degrees from Clemson, one in criminal justice, the other in sociology. Griffiths on the run, hit as he throws, back line to the end zone, touchdown. Great throw. That is a hard throw under duress and puts it in the only place he can where his guy has a chance to make the catch or it goes out of bounds. There's the pressure, just puts it to the back corner. That's a beautiful throw under pressure for the touchdown. A valuable experience gained by Rivas, and what a night for Taylor Marin, who's had nine catches for 93 yards and now a touchdown. The first catches, obviously the first touchdown of his career. Centerville, Virginia, Westfield High School, where he won three straight titles. Extra point is good by Nick Skiba. So it's 37 to 13. It was 37 to three while Trevor Lawrence was in there and a very nice start to the season for the junior playing his last season of college football. Well, the thing that stood out to me tonight is just his comfort. I mean, it, and when you're comfortable, your eyes work well, your feet are quiet. And he's been that way the whole game, moving people with his eyes, strong in the pocket, recognizing what the defense is doing, moving them with a ball fake, and then zipping the ball into open areas. And uh, he's had that kind of night. 22 of 28, 351 yards and one touchdown. And uh, But it was just his comfort from the very beginning. And, you know, Todd mentioned earlier last year when he started the season, coming off the national championship season, it, it, it was almost like he tried to do too much early. He tried to, to force some balls. He made some careless throws, careless mistakes. None of those in the opener tonight. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's a good sign if you're, if you're Dabo Sweeney, if you're Tony Elliott, and the coaches on this offensive staff for Clemson. It's like watching a high school jamboree. You know, he, yeah. he just looks yeah. so comfortable. He knew, it. he knew everything. He was a step ahead of everything, understood the coverage, didn't force anything. And the other the other part, too, was he spread the ball around. You know, uh, Rodgers, number three, the slot receiver, clearly is his, his comfort level. But he really spread the ball around to all of his different receivers and, and never forced the ball into coverage where you said, ah, he, he was trying to get the ball to this guy. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, Braden Galloway had five catches, the same as Amari Rodgers. Joseph Ngata, three catches. Travis Etienne, three. Yeah, he did. He spread the football around. And, uh, and you know, those younger receivers, Ngata and Latson, who are going to start playing more regular roles, they'll just get better and better. Puma Chan. Wow. How about that arm? And it's just a little bit too long for a Joe a Joe. <laughs> You say, why is Clemson still throwing? Well, you got three quarterbacks. You want to give them real reps. You don't want to just put them out there and have them hand off the football. That's a perfect throw by Pumachon. Came out after the interception and put that one out there perfectly. Kobe Pace, just to put a period on the end of the night for Trevor Lawrence, he threw 28 more passes tonight without an interception. That brings him to 267 in a row without an interception. And that is now the fourth longest such streak in ACC history. Remember last year he was, a, he was an interception machine and everyone was knocking him. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Move moved past uh, Mitch Trubisky of North Carolina for the fourth longest. The record is 379 by Russell Wilson, the man 
Mm. John Bertolini compared Tyson to John too. And he played three times with NC State. I know what Russell Wilson's like. He said Puma John is going to be like Russell Wilson, be a third round pick, fourth round pick, and he's going to be awesome in the NFL. And the team that takes him is going to be glad they did. I took a note. <laughs> yes, oh, you sure did. <laughs> And as the guy who had taken, what, 40 something snaps in a college football game prior to tonight. So, Dabo limited sample in game action, but he sees him every day in practice. Fourth down three. Gonna let the clock run down. I assume punt. Timeout, Clemson. 30 second timeout, and it is their first of this half. So while they chat along the Clemson and Wake Forest sidelines, we remind you of our terrific season opening Monday Night Football doubleheader that starts at 7 o'clock with the Steelers and the Giants. Always fun to watch Saquon Barkley to see if the Giants are better with the new coach Joe Judge. Then the Titans and the Broncos at 10-15. Some tough news for the Broncos with Von Miller injured and out. That's at 10-15 Eastern time. Monday Night Countdown gets you started special edition at 5 Eastern you know if you're Dave Clawson obviously you didn't have much of a shot in this game to to make it as competitive as you wanted to but you've scored 13 points and you did a lot of good things against this number one ranked team in the country when you consider 324 total yards of offense only one penalty no turnovers they sacked Trevor Lawrence twice so something to build on if you're Wake Forest. They'll play at North Carolina State in their next game. And then they have Notre Dame after yeah. that. <laughs> no. Easy start. Yeah, tough start. But I'll say this, if they get a pass interference call early, and if two of those deep balls that were right on target were caught, it might be a little bit of a different game. Might be different. There's no foul for illegal block in the back. First down. At the 34-yard line, 54 seconds to go. And still Mitch Griffiths at quarterback. Both backup quarterbacks look good. They obviously have depth at the most important position on their football team. Will Drotty gets the first carry of his night. He's a red shirt junior from Easterly, South Carolina. Had only two carries all of last year. So this will be 12 straight wins for Clemson over Wake Forest. And 23 straight ACC wins. For the Tigers, we open the season top both poles for the second year in a row. It certainly looked worthy of it here tonight. Drotty again, and that'll likely be the last play of the game. So Clemson had an overall winning streak of 29 games, ended in the national championship game to LSU. They're a winner in a delayed opening game of this season. Supposed to start a couple of weeks ago. A lot of respect between those two coaches. As a matter of fact, Dabo Sweeney talked for a long time in our chat the other day about how much respect he has for Dave Kloss and what a well-coached team they are. And you saw a lot of that formula tonight, Todd. Wake Forest doesn't commit penalties. They right. don't turn it over. Yep. And a lot of that is attributed to the coaching. 561 yards of offense for Clemson. The stars were the stars. Lawrence threw for 351 and a touchdown and ran for two. ETN rushed for 102 on just 17 carries. Final score, Clemson 37, Wake Forest 13. Todd Blackledge, Allison Williams, Todd McShay, and our terrific crew, led by Josh Hoffman and Scott Johnson. Good night from Winston-Salem, North Carolina.